What's up everybody, welcome back to the Maths Guy. Today we're looking at grid method multiplication and let's begin. Okay, we're gonna look at these three questions. We've got a green, an orange, and a red chili challenge. They get progressively harder as we go forward. But first, let's look at our steps for grid method. First step we're gonna do is partition our numbers. We're gonna understand what that means in a little bit. Second, we're gonna multiply the individual parts. And then third and finally, we're gonna add those individual parts back together to get our final answer. So let's have a look at our green chili challenge. So our green chili challenge is 23 times 45. So our first step said to partition our number. So what that means is we're gonna look at the number 23 and we're gonna understand that we can partition this into a 20 and a three because 20 plus three equals our 23. So we can do the same to 41 and it would be 40 and one. And once we've done that, we can make our grid. So my question was a two digit number by a two digit number. So therefore my grid will be two lines by two lines. And now simply I'm just gonna put my number in place in the partitioned form. So 23 and 41. Put the multiplication sign, but at this point, let's tidy this up a little bit. Boom. Okay, so now I'm ready to start to answer my question. Now, the way that we work with these grids, this box here will be the product of 20 and 40. This box here will be the product of three and 40. This box here will be the product of one and 20, and this box here will be one and three. So let's have a go. Okay, so the first question is 20 times 40, but 20 times 40 is still quite difficult. So what I can understand is that 20 times 40, I have two zeros. So what I can do is just temporarily ignore these for now and do two times four. Well, two times four is eight. And now I have to put my zeros back because what I've done is I've done two times four, but my question was 20 times 40. And there's a two zeros in that, one in the 20 and one in the 40. So it's actually 100 times larger. So the answer is 800. Okay, let's apply the same logic to the second part and I have 40 times three. I'll ignore the zero to start with. Four times three is 12. Put the zero back, 120. Now I'm doing one times 20. Well, one times 20 is 20. And then in the last box, I have one times three. One times three is three. But am I finished? No, because if I look back at my steps, I now need to do step three, which is to add these numbers back together. Because so far I've broken this question down into smaller parts, now I need to put it back together again. So I need to add my 800 to my 120, my 20 and my three. And here we go. Zero, zero, zero and three equals three. Two and two is four. Eight and one is nine. So my answer to 23 times 41 equals 943. Okay, let's look at our second challenge, our orange chili challenge. We have 78 times 53. Now I'm gonna jump straight into making my grid this time. One, two, one, two, and I'm gonna have 78. I've still partitioned, but I've just skipped a step. And 53. Put my multiplication sign, and let's tidy it up. Okay, so the first question is 50 times 70. Well, again, I don't like 50 times 70. I'm gonna make it 100 times smaller and work out five times seven. Five times seven is 35. So put my 35 in place and then put back my one, two placeholders. Next question says 50 times eight. So I'm just gonna do five times eight, which is 40. Put back my one placeholder, 400. Three times 70. So I'm just gonna do three times seven. Three times seven is 21 and put back my placeholder. And then last question, three times eight. There's no placeholders, it's just three times eight. Three times eight is 24. Am I finished? Not yet because I partitioned, but I've not added them back together. So let's add them back together. Here we go. Okay, and in my ones column, I have zero, 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 and four equals four. In my tens, I have zero, zero, one, and two equals three. And in my hundreds, I have a five and a four and a two, which is 11. And in my thousands, I have three and my new one, four. So my answer is 4,134. 
Okay, let's look at our last question. Let's look at our red chili challenge, 125 times 46. Now I'm gonna let you in on a secret. This is actually not any harder. It's just a bit longer with another step. So what we can see is we now have a three digit number, which means we're now gonna to have to have three lines in our grid. It doesn't matter which way around because remember, multiplication is commutative. 125 times 46 is the same as saying 46 times 125. So I'm gonna to choose to have three horizontal lines. One, two, three, and two vertical. Put my numbers partitioned, 125 and 40. Six. Let's tidy it up. Okay, here we go. So my first question is 100 times 40. Now I can see I have one, two, three zeros that I'm gonna ignore for a moment, and just times one times four, which is four. And now I have to put my one, two, three back in. So 40 times 100 is 4,000. Okay, and now my 100 times six is one times six is six, put back my two zeros. 20 times 40 has one, two zeros. So two times four is eight put back my one, two zeros. Then I have 20 times six, one zero. Two times six is 12, put back my one zero. Five times 40, ignore my one zero. Five times four is 20, put back my one zero. And last but not least, five times six is 30. Now I have a longer one to add up. Again, it's not that much harder, it's just a bit longer. So here we go, in my ones column, I have all zeros, so my answer is gonna be zero. In my tens, I have a two and a three which is five. In my hundreds, I have a six and eight, which is 14, plus the one, 15, plus the two, 17. And in my thousands, I have the four and the new one, five. So my answer to 125 times 46 is 5,750. Okay, let's just check our things to remember for a grid method then. The first is to partition the numbers. We need to partition the numbers so that we have more manageable chunks to multiply. Then we're gonna put the numbers into our grid and multiply the individual parts separately. But remember, if a number has a zero at the end, we can give it the special treatment of ignoring it for now and then putting those zeros back into our answer. And then finally, when we've done all the sections, our last tip is to add those bits all back together so that we get our grand total. Okay, this is your time to press pause. Have a go at these three questions that are on the screen and put your answers into the comment section so that I can give you a mark. Good luck. Okay guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, think about subscribing and I'll see you in another video. Peace out.